we begin our journey into the supplier management practice with section one, the key concepts of supplier management. In the exam, there will be five questions of the 20, which will be Bloom's level two or understanding questions from this section, the key concepts. In this section, we are gonna first of all, begin by understanding the purpose of the practice and then describe various terms and concepts which are listed here, such as supplier, contract, RFX, which could be either an RFI, RFP, RFQ, RFB, RFD. We will get into what these mean and what the differences are between them. And also conclude with the practice success factors and the key metrics of the practice based on those practice success factors. The section one uh, is a longer section as compared to the others. And similarly, section two, which is about the processes and value streams for this uh, practice is also a longer section because together section one and section two make up 10 of the 20 questions in the exam. So five are from section one, which is this topic we are in right now. And then the next recording, which is section two is about the value streams and processes, which is worth another five questions. So therefore these sections are longer recordings and the remaining ones are shorter recordings because uh, together, the remaining five lessons make up for only 10 of the 20 questions in the exam. Nevertheless, every question, every mark, every score is important. So let's begin our journey by first understanding the purpose of the supplier management practice. The purpose is to ensure that the organization's suppliers and their performances are managed appropriately to support the seamless provision of quality products and services. This includes creating an optimized sourcing strategy, as well as closer, more collaborative relationships with key suppliers to uncover and realize new value and reduce the risk of failure. There are a few things here that we just noted. So it's mainly to ensure that the suppliers are managed appropriately, which is about the relationship between the organization and its suppliers, and also the performances of the suppliers need to be managed by monitoring the performance and reviewing them independently or jointly with the suppliers. And uh, also it does include an optimized sourcing strategy to be created. We will learn more about what the sourcing strategy is with some examples. And uh, uh, also to make the relationship with the suppliers closer rather than just order oriented or basic, even though some relationships would be very basic, which are order oriented, like order fulfillment only. Some relationships could be uh, more than basic. It could be cooperative where the supplier would do more than just the basic order taking and order fulfilling. And then we also have the best one, which is the partnership in which there is a closer trust and collaboration. And that is what is actually recommended if that is possible under the given circumstances. Because the closer the relationship, the better it would be to uncover and realize new value and reduce the risk of failure of services and products. There's also another word here, which is the seamless provision. A seamless means, uh, the word seam, as you know, means a stitch uh, between two pieces of cloth. So, so the engagement between the organization and the supplier should be smooth and transparent so that there's no barrier between them. There's better collaboration. Therefore, this practice ensures the effective use of third-party services in two ways. Firstly, by establishing a common approach to sourcing strategy and managing supplier relationships. As I briefly explained earlier, it's about the supplier relationships management, but we haven't talked much about the sourcing strategy yet that will come up later on. And secondly, the third parties will be used uh, by maintaining a single point of control over active and planned supplier contracts and services which means they need to be a point of control from the organization over the suppliers, contracts, and services. By the way, in the exam, um, you will have only understanding type of questions. So the more you know the theory for the key concepts of the practice, the better for you. There won't be any application questions at all. But as we move forward into the other sections and other recordings, we will see where application questions are likely. The next uh, concept here is the sourcing strategy. It is a strategy of an organization 
to obtain products and services needed to effectively and efficiently run its business. So the starting point is every organization has its own strategy. It could be anything such as increasing their market share, becoming a tier one organization for uh, their customers in that industry, uh, or their strategy could be to become more innovative or reduce their operating costs, increase their revenue and profit. And based on the organization strategy, there would be a sourcing strategy for suppliers. So this sourcing strategy need to support the organization strategy to fulfill the organization's goals and objectives. While apart from the sourcing strategy, there'll be other components of the overall organization strategy required to fulfill the organization strategy. And this sourcing strategy, the next point here is it relates to the use and selection of suppliers and partners services ensures meeting or exceeding service levels, optimal cost of service consumption to be ensured, and also ensure the understanding and control of associated risks. Then the strategy also defines which resources should be created and managed internally, and which resources should be obtained uh, and managed by third parties, obtained from and or managed by third parties, and to what extent. The organization strategy also defines the the sourcing strategy uh, also defines the overall approach to managing third-party services. And this can itself be retained or delegated to a key supplier or to a specialized service integrator, meaning the management of the third-party suppliers and the services can be done by the organization themselves. In that case, it is called the retained organization, which will manage the suppliers outside of it. Or the management of all such third parties can also be delegated to another third party. In that case, they would be known as the service integrator. We will be also getting a little more into the service integration concept, uh, which is through the, the CM body of knowledge, the service integration and management body of knowledge. Then uh, this sourcing strategy, one more thing about this, the policies and guidelines that are defined within the strategy have significant impact on the organization's product and services as well as on the organization's uh, structure and allocation of responsibilities. Uh, 